If you have carbs before going into a fast, are you going to have a more effective fat burning fast? See, in theory, it kind of makes sense, right? Carbs spike leptin, which can spike the metabolism. So that would imply that if we spike our metabolism prior to a fast, we're going to burn more fat. This used to be what I thought. But when I start looking at the research, I've realized that it's not quite that simple. You see, carbs do spike something called leptin. Okay? Leptin is something that signals from the fat cell to the brain to let the brain know that it can go ahead and turn on the metabolism. More leptin equals faster metabolism. Less levels of leptin don't tell the brain to ramp up the metabolism as much. So essentially, we want spikes in leptin every now and then. That's why every now and then we have a cheat meal. So in theory, it would have made sense to have a little bit of a cheat meal prior to going into a fast because we'd spike leptin and therefore the metabolism would be revved up. But like I said, not necessarily the case. Hey, we've got new videos coming out three times a week at least, usually almost every single day. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Then I also wanna make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. That way you know every single time I go live, but also every single time we release a new video. All right, so, so I can make some sense of all of this. Let me reference a quick study that was published in the American Journal of Physiology. This explains the whole leptin thing, and it explains why carbs actually spike leptin. So again, I need you to hear me out through this entire video because it's gonna come full circle. Everything will make sense, and you will have a solid conclusion out of this. But this particular study took a look at 22 subjects, and it divided them into two groups. One group had a cheat meal that was high in carbohydrates, and another group had a cheat meal that was high in fats. And the study wanted to take a look at which group had a stronger surge of leptin. Okay, remember, leptin spikes the metabolism. Well, they found that the carbohydrate group had a higher surge of leptin than the fat group. Okay, all this tells us is that periodically, even on a ketogenic diet, having a little bit of a leptin spike from carbohydrates probably is a good thing. It's going to help stoke your metabolism. But if you're fasting, it may not be the case. And again, I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna explain what I used to think. This used to be my theory. And in fact, I've experienced it multiple times. If I have a decent amount of carbs prior to going into maybe an extended fast, I would think that it would ramp up my metabolism. My thought process was spiking the leptin levels with carbs equals metabolism elevating. Therefore, when I go into a fast, my metabolism is already elevated, so it's going to want to burn more fat. Okay, now it was compounded by the fact that I would feel hungry so I assumed because I was hungry, I was burning more fat, but in reality, I was just hungry because my blood sugar was rising and then falling. So what it turns out to be is actually the opposite, and it requires a little bit of a state shift in our mind. When we are fasting, we actually want our leptin levels to be low. How crazy is that? You see, it comes down to sort of a hormonal response. Remember, when we're in a fasted state, our goal is not to rev up the metabolism. Now, I'm gonna say that again. When we are fasting, it is not our goal to rev up our metabolism. Our metabolism has to do with nutrient metabolism, predominantly with eating, okay? We want our metabolism to be high when we're eating because that means our body's taking in what we're eating and it's incinerating it and it's incinerating it fast. That is a fast metabolism associated with eating. Who doesn't want to be able to eat and have it just incinerated and melted, right? When we're fasting, that's not the goal. When we're fasting, we're trying to achieve a hormonal shift that allows us to predominantly use fat for fuel and not other substrates, okay? Think about it from an evolutionary standpoint. Why would we want our metabolism to be elevated when we're not eating? That sounds like a disaster. Like, our bodies know better than to ramp up our metabolism when we're not eating. Otherwise, we'd just break down fat and muscle, lean body mass, we just destroy ourselves, right? So when we remember this, it allows us to realize, wait a minute, we don't want leptin levels to be high during a fast, we want leptin levels to be low. So even though cheat meals are powerful, we have to think about how we enter our fast very strategically. The nice thing is you can still eat good tasting foods that are gonna spike your leptin. And again, that's why I've created my Thrive Box. I've created a Thrive Fasting Box. So Thrive Market makes it so you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. You've heard me talk about Thrive lots of times on lots of videos, but you may not know that I've created a keto box, I've created a fasting box, I've created a hormone optimization box. I create all kinds of Thrive Boxes so you can get groceries that I would normally recommend, all consolidated into one box that's delivered right to your doorstep 
versus you having to go to the grocery store. So I encourage you to check out Thrive Market down in the description. There's a special link down below. But make sure you watch this video so you get a full understanding of what you're getting yourself into as far as these diet changes go. That way you can implement what you get from Thrive a lot easier and get more benefit out of it. So that leads me into a study that was published in the journal Cell. Now, this study was done on rats, but honestly, it's apples to oranges, but at the same time, it's still pretty darn relevant when you look at the actual blood work. Okay, so they took a look at rats that were going from a fed state into a fasted state, and they wanted to measure all kinds of different hormones and catecholamines. Now, they found that as the rats entered a fasted state, once they had been fasted for a significant amount of time, or a period of time, they went into what's called hypoleptinemia, low levels of leptin. Okay, now when you have low levels of leptin, you're gonna have a consequent activation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Basically, your brain is activating your adrenal glands, okay, which therefore releases what's called corticotropin releasing hormone. I know I'm going in depth here, trust me, I'll come back. This corticotropin releasing hormone activates catecholamines, adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine. Do those ring a bell? Those are what burn fat. So in essence, those catecholamines that burn fat don't get elevated unless leptin levels are low. So think about this for a second. If we have a bunch of carbs prior to entering a fast, we spike our leptin levels way up high, okay? Well now, because they're high, we have a significant amount of drop that we have to wait to happen before we ever activate those catecholamines. So if you're doing a shorter term fast, then you want to have that fat burning state kick in a lot faster, which means you wanna make sure that your leptin levels are at a moderate level or somewhat low by the time you enter your fast. Otherwise, you're going to not be getting into the fat burning mode till the end of your fast. Now, additionally, the study found that there were decreased levels of what's called malonyl coenzyme A, which is something that would normally block fat from going to the mitochondria. So they found that when leptin levels were low, fat was able to enter the mitochondria through beta oxidation a little bit more. So meaning the cell was able to use fat more efficiently. And here's what's wild with the study. The moment that they infused leptin, okay, they didn't even feed these rats. The moment that they just gave them leptin, everything reversed. The fat burning stopped, the benefits of the fast essentially stopped. So it shows that when leptin levels are still high during a fast, we're not getting as much benefit. So pretty powerful stuff. So what does this all mean for you, someone that's fasting? It doesn't mean that you can't have carbohydrates, but it means that you wanna be trying to keep your leptin levels a little bit lower. Remember, you don't wanna stoke your metabolism a ton. You wanna keep your metabolism just going through the norm. And that way the fast has the hormonal process of allowing you to burn fat. Now, you do want to have your metabolism elevated if you're eating more frequently. So if you're doing a ketogenic diet and you're not implementing fasting, a periodic cheat meal with some carbohydrates is actually going to activate leptin and get you more benefit. Or if you mix keto and fasting, you just want to make sure that you're adding your cheat meals not necessarily associated with your fasting days. So meaning have your cheat meal before a regular keto day versus a regular fasting day, if that makes sense. Now, to put this all into something tangible as well, it basically means that you wanna keep your meals a little bit smaller before you go into your fast. No giant meals, which quite frankly is a why I have kind of a case against one meal a day, to be completely honest. Okay, I'm not totally anti one meal a day because I think it's helping a lot of people, but when you look at it, you're having a large amount of calories, which is spiking your leptin, which is making your fast ultimately less effective because you're not able to get that decrease in malonyl coenzyme A. You're not able to get the activation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. You're not able to get what you need to activate adrenaline and burn the fat. So smaller meals, just in a more consolidated window, breaking your fast with a very small meal, then a moderate sized meal, and then another small meal. That way you're not having a big spike in leptin, you're just keeping it under control. So now that you know how to apply all of this, you can start enhancing your fasts. And again, I say that this is more important for a shorter term fast because you want to enter the fat burning mode as fast as possible. If you're only fasting for 16 hours, if you're not getting into fat burning mode, for 14 hours of that fast, then that's a lot less impact. Whereas if you're doing a longer term fast, it's not as big of an impact because you have more fasting time, for lack of a better way of saying it, to allow you to burn fat. So very important for people that are doing a 16-8 strategy to make sure that they don't have massive spikes in leptin 
before they go into their shorter fasts. I hope that this helps you out, and as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Please make sure you comment any ideas, and also make sure you check out Thrive Market down in the description below. See you soon.